legends and super legends. We're rolling out. It's almost seven o'clock. So we're going to hit the road, see who we can pick up. Here are the birds. It's a beautiful, crispy morning. The cool front came back in. Yeah. Let's go, my brother. Yep. I'll turn on this light here. All right. So with the spring forward, even though it's almost seven o'clock, say 7.04, the sun's not up yet because they moved the time forward. On this ride, Paul and I left Northampton. We're running behind. We filmed our warm up. We did an intense warm up. Once we got into the woodlands, we picked up Team RR. We got there just as they were leaving. It was very, very fast on Fish Creek there into Honier. Once we got to Mill Route Road, we let them go. We rode up 2854 into Montgomery. Then we went out on 149. We took 1097 into the forest. We went through and went straight across 149. We took Talia Ferro Road. We took Cedar Hill. We took a back way. Those That's all off camera. But then once we got to Red Top, we filmed. Red Top ended at a gravel patch. It didn't get to Shiro, Texas. And so we came back through the forest into Montgomery. At that time, it was very, very breezy. That's all off camera. But I think you will like the clips that we got for you. Once we got into Montgomery, we went on Spring Branch Road, took Kenan Cutoff into the neighborhood, back on our favorite road, Honia Egypt Road. We were really moving back there. We ended up increasing our effort on this entire ride, which is consistent with our long-term plan. So we got back a little earlier than planned. We took the wide, long way through Sterling Ridge back to Northampton. We're trying to catch up the team out. Right. Come on, man. We're running behind. Um, it's about 7.31 already. And we're about eight minutes away. So we're a little bit behind. This road is called Cochran's Crossing once you cross Woodlands Parkway. Well, as soon as we got that, the other one went yellow, so I knew it was going to change. Paul said that uh, it was a quick change on the light. That light early in the morning behaves really well. It picks up bites. And once we got there, I saw the other side had gone yellow. I didn't even unclip, but he unclipped. That's why I had to tell him to egg him on and say, let's go. So what we're doing here is this is a quiet intersection coming ahead. I'm going to check as we approach the stop sign. I'm going to look left, then look right, and let Paul know it's clear. We're trying to make up time here. So I check both sides, I even know nothing's coming. And we're gonna sneak through the light at the next intersection because it doesn't always pick up bikes. It's a very quiet intersection. So a lot of times when I come, I go right and do a, a loop and come back the other way instead of standing at that light because it's a long light. So what we do very early today because we're trying to get there and not miss the group. I'm going to tell him that we're going to sneak across. So he said, yeah, I look left. Nothing's coming. So we're going to go to the middle. When we get to the middle, I check to the right. I tell him it's clear. That's how we sneak across. So if you're going to do something like this, be careful. Be prepared to stop. So we're, we're trying to get up there before the group leaves so that we're not doing a big chase to get on, to catch up with them. Plus, we're not sure what route they're doing. They don't do the same route all the time. We left a little later than normal, so so our our warm up is very intense. We're actually at the top of zone three, going into sweet spot right now. Normally we just warm up zone one, zone two, but we kicked it up today. After last week's ride that we posted, someone came on the channel, one of our new legends, and said. He couldn't imagine riding eight hours. You don't need to ride eight hours. Ride whatever you have the time for, but you need to build up to your longest ride. Don't just jump up and increase your duration aggressively until your body's ready. We've been riding long for years. So we're accustomed to this. You have to start slowly. But it all starts with a comfortable bike. If your bike's not comfortable, you're not going to be riding eight hours. 
you know, and a lot of the guys we ride with on this ride are not fitted very well. That's why they ride short. Because after an hour, you know, you can't you can't cheat, you can't hide discomfort. So we're keeping it around 18 miles an hour. We're going the road goes up and we're going into the wind. And we don't want to go full gas at this point. We're monitoring the time. Right now it's 7.34. They usually leave at 7.35. We're about probably maybe three kilometers away, I would say. So it'll probably take us another five minutes to get there from this point. But we're moving. We don't normally warm up this fast. But, you know, it all works out. We're going to start ramping things up now that the season's here, spring is here. So it was consistent with our plan, although the anxiety of wondering, okay, are we going to catch them? And if not, which direction do we continue going on to try to eventually hook up with them? So uh, you will hear Paul in a few kilometers tell me, we just need to go on Kirkendall, I mean on Research Forest. Just, just, let's just go straight. Because once we got to Research Forest, it was like 7.38. And we were three minutes later than when they rolled out. So we decided we we're just going to go hard on Research Forest and head northwest to try to catch up to them. So we're pouring it on. Paul pulled off camera for about probably six or seven kilometers before we decided to turn on the camera here. So once I saw that he was pulling hard, I said, okay, maybe we need to go ahead and try to make the group so that we don't have to just film us riding today. It is not easy, we're working here. It looks easy because when your bike is fitted, and you're, you've got decent form, it looks easier than the effort you're putting out. I love riding early in the morning. The roads are quiet. The air is nice and crisp even in the summer. So I definitely prefer to ride early in the morning or later in the evening after 5 p.m. It cools off dramatically in the summer around that time. All of this is up. It's like a falls flat. So what you see visually reflects what we're dealing with. So now it says 2%. So it just, you know, this entire direction once you head north from where we are, you're going up. The cool thing is in the afternoon you're coming down. So you can go even faster. We're going to turn left up here. The light is red. This used to be a four-way stop sign. It just added this light. So what I do is we come to a stop and that car turns. But we're under pressure for time. It's 737. Once that guy goes, nobody else is here, I tell him, let's go. Because that car has the red light over there. We're trying to get up there and salvage our ability to catch these guys. We started to push harder later in our warm-up. Because at first there was no urgency and then once Paul got to the front he started drilling it. Then I went ahead and took over and said okay let's try to get up there. We're on Kirkendall Boulevard here. The road up there is Research Forest. That's the corner of where the, the mall, the outdoor mall sits where Crest Pizza is. On the left where that car is. We're going to take the left lane here and get to that intersection we're going to be turning left and the mall is on the right after we turn left the mall actually sits on that entire corner 
So he tells me we just need to go straight on research for us. I nodded my head. We think alike. Before he can say stuff, I know exactly what he's talking about. We're kind of on the same page. This is Research Forest Boulevard. This is the main drag once you leave Crust Pizza that we get on. So he said, let's just go straight on Research Forest. Instead of trying to go into that lot, go across and turn left, we're just going to take the main drag. And so if they're already on the road, we're just going to drill it and go straight. So once I turn here, I figure they're gone because I looked at the clock and it's 739. They usually leave at 735. So I figure, okay, let's just increase our pace and catch them during the warm up. So you'll see me approach 40K in a bit. We start to gradually edge it up because he said, let's just go straight. So that's what I'm doing here. You don't want to panic, even in a race. If you have a flat tire, you need to get back. Panicking uses too much energy. Just relax and ride. Even if you have a team and your teammates are pulling you back to the pack, relax. Don't waste, don't, don't get anxious. Anxiety uses energy. So right here he said they're still there and I kind of shook my head go we've been working hard so I said okay so I turn right here no not yet but I'm gonna take one now so I asked him if he took a gel he said no so he's gonna take a gel I usually start with a gel in my system so I'm gonna go ahead and take a health break since they're still there, I don't want to stop. They're still there. They're yes. four there minutes beyond. So I told him to go in there and take a gel with them. And I'm going to pull in here, find a quiet spot. And after that, I turn around. And just then, they're rolling. So it was perfect. I didn't have to stop. So I'll go ahead and just cut straight across here and meet them. And Mark greeted me. That's Paul on the left there. So are you guys gonna are you guys gonna go out to Bethel and then turn left and go up to Richards for more distance or will you coming back? Um, we'll go. To put, uh, today. Yep. Beautiful day. Oh, it's only gonna get better. Yep. Yeah. Nice and cool. I think Mark was asking about our route because it's probably we're planning on going through the forest themselves. But we never right, plan our route quickly. to a team. Kind of stay cool. At two o'clock, we sixty-four. So yeah, Mark said it was gonna warm up quickly. I told him, no, it's gonna stay cool because later in the afternoon, we barely get to eighteen Celsius. It's two Celsius right now. It's cold. There's always one or two riders that come without tights on a cold ride. I don't get that. Two C is cold. Anything below ten Celsius, you need to cover your knees. Unless it's going to warm up quickly or it's a warm 10C, meaning the air is coming from the south. Regardless of where you live, the warmer air comes from the south. So bridge the gap. <laughs> Paul said bridge the gap. I said no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. There are riders up there that rolled out of the parking lot ahead of us. I told you, no, I'm not bridging the gap. Just moved up. But Mark was probably asking because they're going to do a little longer ride, but they always stop at Taco Corner. I don't like to stop. I like to keep going. I like to stop at Taco Corner on the way back. So Mark says there's a bunch of jackrabbits here today. And you hear my comment. It gets really fast. It actually gets slow because no one wants to pull. It's like there's a law, like we hit a wall, like last Saturday. Everybody looking around. Like, no, you started to get up here. Yeah, what, what Mark is saying, I said that sometimes when it gets really fast, once we break away or whatever, nobody wants to go through because the pace is really hard. So he said, he, I don't know about these guys. And he's kind of right because uh, some of these guys, uh, they'll get to the front and they'll pull. And then they, when they get off the front, they don't go all the way to the back. They might come down one or two riders, 
and slip right back in because they want to go back up and do the work. And that's fine. That's their plan. You need to make sure what your goal is for that day. You know, for me, I, I can ride with them and then we still do our longer ride. But the thing is, at some point, sometimes they, they don't ride very efficiently, which is fine because if you are a competitive cyclist and you're going to be competing, you know, you have to be able to do whatever the group is doing or whatever, you know, comes up in, in a race. But a lot of times, if somebody's going to accelerate and then just back off right away, I don't really like to go with them because I want to go with people who, if you start a break, you should be able to keep it up. What's the point of expending all that energy and then sitting up? So for me, on these rides, most of the time, I don't like to ride away from the camera because then it's like, okay, what are we teaching here? Not a whole lot. So a lot of times, I turn off the power and wait. But what Mark was saying is that these guys, when they start going, the new guys that are joining, a lot of them are coming from the bike barn group, which has injected some energy into these rides. And it's really cool to see, you know, because we're actually holding a pace line now, as opposed to just being all over the road, like we used to do sometimes in the past. So I really like to see, I like seeing that. You, you guys remember, those of you who've been following the rides, we would try to keep things going to keep them riding well we don't have to do that with these new guys this uh, this last couple of weeks i got to meet a couple of them on sunday and i know one of them i've ridden with him on the bike barn ride i actually filmed it it's on the channel his name is robert i will point him out here on this ride but uh they brought new energy to the group so that's good So the theme of this ride, as indicated in the title, is how to ride in a pace line. I will focus on pointing that out when we really get going. Right now, this is the warm-up. Uh, the guy behind here, I think that's Lulo. Lulo had already told Mark, don't wait for us. Lulo's not dressed appropriately. He, he should have his knee covered because you waste energy. And any energy you're using to stay warm takes away from the energy you need to ride. Two Celsius is too cold to be down. It's, it's 30 something degrees, 35, 36 degrees. It's too cold to be without covered knees. Your body is, is going to use energy to keep you warm and your knees don't have a lot of tissue down there. So you can get arthritis. This guy is struggling to clip in. Usually uh, if your shoe covers are in the way, that can cause that too. So maybe that's what's going on with him. Our shoes are not covered. We we're, we're wearing the Rafa Classic shoes and they're sealed. They're very comfortable. So we didn't have to cover them. This is 1488, the FM 1488. We're on Egypt Lane, as you saw. We're gonna go across Egypt Lane and cut through the neighborhood. This, uh, the name changes when we go across to Huff Smith, Conroe. Mo joins up, Mo, the, the WCC guy. That's Mo on the left there. That's Topo. Maurizio Topini on the left there. He's got his shoe covered and everything. You see how Mo is dressed for cold weather? He's, he's wearing leg warmers. I mean, knee warmers. You know, they, they go about halfway down the calf or something like that. You need to at least cover your knees. And you go, of course, you see Dan is not wearing anything on his knee. And the other rider on the left in front of us there has nothing on the knees. It may look cool and everything, but... You, you pay the price. If it's cold and you don't cover yourself adequately, your performance suffers. That's Robert in front of us here in the chartreuse vest. Uh, he's the one used to ride from the bike barn. They kicked him out of their group and said oh, he's not welcome. <laughs> he told me on Sunday, he said that uh, he was told not to, not to come back. He's person non non grata. I didn't get the details regarding what led to that, but it wasn't one incident. I think he butted heads with the, the, the guy who runs the group. And so that that's a whole different issue there. I just kind of I smiled when he told me about it. But he was basically told not to return. He'd ridden with them for a long time. 
We filmed them one day when we went and the leader was not there and I presumed he was the, the leader because he was controlling everything and giving directions and whatever. And uh, who knows, maybe that, that may be why he's no longer welcome. Maybe he was trying to take over, who knows. But uh, he told me that <laughs> the leader of the group told him not to come back. <laughs> I've never heard of that before. <laughs> <laughs> that's a unique situation usually people leave if, if they don't like something in the group I haven't heard a few of them told not to return <laughs> but I'm sure it's happened before in other places so feel free to let us know in the comments if you've ever been asked not to come back to a group ride <laughs> oh man <laughs> Look, Bob is leading the group. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Don't really start right. So when you ride in a group like this, you are we're in a double pace line per se, because the pace is not fast. We're warming up. Resist the urge to use the entire road. You see a rider up there on the left? Don't do that. Use your half of the road. Because if you do that, then you have to react if a car shows up then you have to jump back well if you're on your side of the road you don't have to be reacting so stay on your side of the road there's a hole in the middle so we spread right here you see the hole right there we avoid that and even though they said hole hole you will see how ineffective that is later in the rod i will point that out you will hear somebody yell hole and mark will hit the hole because once you yell hole the person behind you has to look for the hole whereas if you point to the hole the person will just avoid where you're pointing i've talked about it before and these guys from the bike barn like to yell hole and we have a few in our group mark included that like to yell hole it's ineffective when you yell hole, I've got to look for it, find where it is, and then try to avoid it. You can't do that in an instant. So we hit the open road here, and we go single file. We could do a double pace line here if we chose to, but uh, these guys ride single file. I stay on the road because we have two lanes that are available to the northbound traffic. There is no reason for me to be on the shoulder. And, you know, in a large group, take the lane. Take the lane means ride where I am. This guy's leaving a gap, so I ride around him. And make a note of him because he's going to do it again later in the ride and he will pay a price. Um, you have to decide whether you want to stay on the wheel or not. Every time you leave a gap, you're wasting energy. You're going to ride with the people, get closer, get within a foot. And if you're very comfortable with the skills of the rider, you can even get closer. So I'm following Mike S5 there. That's all I'm paying attention to. I'm not even paying attention to him because this guy on the right. Because he look at the gap right here. So Paul rides up to me. This is the way you want to be. This saves you energy. If you're not going to do that, then you need to be doing it intentionally because you want to work harder by choice. A lot of experienced riders will do that. They'll hang off the back so they can ride as if to say they're riding solo that's if the group is not pushing them enough and they just want to work harder but if you need to draft you need to be in the position I'm in you need to ride within a foot or closer to the rider you're following avoid overlapping sometimes you can't help it if they slow down but if they do slow down then you pull out wide left or right on either side of them like you see me doing right there, I'm using that to slow me down, not my brakes. I let the wind slow me down. I move a little to the right so I can see around Mike right here. I can see what's happening up there instead of riding directly behind him. You see, he's doing the same thing. He's on the left of Robert so he can see around Robert. That's how you ride in a pace line. You don't need to be way over, just a little over so you can see around. And sometimes even if you can't be in that position we're in, you can lean your head one side or the other and look around the rider. But you want you don't want to be riding blind. You want to be able to see what's coming up the road. 
then you can relax and by doing that you will ride smoother and the person behind you will react less to surprises because you won't be surprised benefit of the draft I'm not pedaling just getting kind of sucked along I hope we get a profile shot in this ride so you guys can see how well, both Paul and I set up similarly. You don't need to be sitting upright like you, you're a sail on a sailboat. Your back needs to be around 45 degrees or so. It doesn't have to be exactly 45 degrees, but you need to be in a position to where your bars stretch you. I see, see my position right there in the drops. It's the same position when I'm on the hoods. When your bike is set up correctly for your body, you should be comfortably stretched out to where you're not sitting upright. I stand for the crack in the middle of the road. We're taking this lane. There are two lanes. See all the debris on the right there? You want to avoid that. That's where you get flat. Especially when we're going above 45K, we're almost 50K. The faster you go, use, use the, the, the road. You're going fast enough. 30 miles an hour is pretty fast on a bicycle. And the, the other road users will understand. You don't need to ride through a lot of debris at speed or even when you're going slow. So we've completed the descent and we're just kind of rolling along with the built up momentum. The effort is somewhat low. We're at the top of zone one for me anyway. And everybody's zones are different. So don't go on a ride and somebody's saying I'm going to be doing zone two. It doesn't mean that their zone two will be your zone two. So if they're faster, you want to draft closer so you can keep your effort in a lower zone than they may be going if that's your plan. You can see I am still on the left so I can see around. You see Mike S5 up there in front of Mark. He can see around the guy in front of him. Mark can also see around Mike S5. So as we go faster, we'll get closer together. But right now, we're just kind of rolling along. Even when the speed picks up, you still want to not be riding what I call blind. You see, I move a little behind Mark, but I'm still slightly off to one side. That's how you want to follow. You don't need to, you don't need to be directly behind. The draft is not in the perfect spot all the time. You have to seek it out. Sometimes it's on the left, sometimes it's on the right, sometimes it's directly behind, and so you have to seek it out. But I only maximize the draft when I absolutely need to, when the effort really calls for it. Right now, we're just kind of rolling along. I'm in zone three right now. If you look at those shorts, uh, this is a good example of the design that I talked about in the review. Uh, those are the Pro Team Shorts 2, the Pro Team uh, Winter Tights. You will see the colors of the panels look different. The darker panel is the Lycra that resists moisture and everything. The lighter panels on the back of my leg and on the upper part of my glutes, my lower back, they're lighter. The lighter panels provide breathability. In a little bit, the sun will sh will show what I'm talking about because we're going through a lot of shadows here. Once we get through that light, the sun should be pretty much like right here. Look, look at those, look at the panels. You can see the distinction. And you see it better when we get into Honia because I think the sun is just coming up and these trees are blocking it right now. But the reason I, I mentioned that is select your cycling gear appropriately because the quality gear, because of all those specific panels in there, I can wear these tights in 1C right now. 
in one seat temperature and I can wear them up to 24 Celsius comfortably. See that? See the panel? Right there. My lower back has a different color. The back of my legs have a different color as the sun comes in. That's all where I get the breathability and that's why you can stay comfortable. And the front blocks moisture and wind. And what I'm sitting on also blocks moisture for those of you who don't use mud guards. So right now we're just kind of cruising. I'm just sitting in, you see Mark's pointing out the obstacles, but they're not an impact to me because look where I am. I'm riding where the right tire of vehicles ride. We have two lanes in this direction and this lane is ours. I'm using it. They choose to stay on the shoulder, that's their affair. You can see what's his name, Robert up there is using the road. Mike S5 is using the road. Um, Mark is drifting on and off the shoulder. I just stay where, right where you see me. We're we have this lane, so it's clear to the other road users that we're using this lane. I think we're slowing for a light. It's a guy up there shaking his hand vigorously. Yeah, I'm telling Mark, I said, what is that? I mean, he is shaking his hand so vigorously. He, he's doing both of them. The camera missed uh, the one on the right. He needs a fit. He pulled over to the right there. That's the one shaking his hand like crazy. His hand went to sleep. If you got that much weight on the bars, and he's not a new rider, you need to visit a, a bike fit specialist. You should not be having numb hands when you ride your bike. Nothing should be numb. That means your weight distribution is off. If you're wearing your tape, your handlebar tape on your bars in one area, that's, that means your fit needs to be revisited. I'm sure you all know people who have worn tape where they sit up there they're on the hoods. You shouldn't have that much weight on your tape to wear them out. I see that often. And all those little issues transfer into discomfort on and off the bike after your ride. So it doesn't make you look forward to getting back on the bike. We we'll go through the light and somebody drills it at the front. So right here, yeah, Paul gets a little close. I was just going to say he wasn't close enough because you're catching a lot of wind if you're this far back. You got to be closer. So unless you're intentionally falling back, like here, we're going downhill. Yeah, you can kind of let a little bit of gap open, but you still got to be alert. But once the road goes up, these guys drill it. And right now, it's almost like we it's leveled off. It's not really a descent. These roads are very similar to what you'd find on a mountain climb, where you climb, you have grades, it levels off, and so forth. So you have to select your gear to stay at the appropriate effort. Or do you do whatever you can, whatever you can to stay with the group if you want to stay with the group. But when you're riding solo, you always have to hopefully have pre-selected what effort you want to go on. Right here, the, the pace picks up a bit. It's 2%, 3%. You look at Mark. When he's going hard, he hunches up and bends his shoulder. That takes energy to do. He, he, he's doing it again. You shouldn't have to change your posture when you put power into the pedals. If your bike is fitted properly, you just pedal harder. You, you shouldn't need to arch your back or move your arms or anything. You just ride. This is a good shot that Paul got here, where we get to see, I think we're, I don't know if there's a light up there, I'm trying to see if we get another shot, but it's going up, yeah, I think we're coming to Ridge Lake Shores, it gets to probably three and a half percent before the light. I don't think we catch the light today, I think we get a green, yeah. Yep, three percent registered, it's about three and a half percent. It kicks real quickly and then it levels off and it goes a slightly down. So right here, the speed continues 
because after forcing it on that climb and the road levels off you, even if you carry the same effort you're going to be going faster you can see we're doing we're doing 38 kilometers an hour it's like 23 to 24 miles an hour but it's like there's been it's almost what I got on this ride it didn't seem as hard as the week before there was there were a lot of accelerations but there are there were a lot of coasting as well right here we've got a bit of a gap on Paul and then he closes it he gets a little closer because when somebody accelerates there's a reaction that's why I talk about people who sit way in the back uh, in cycling we call it the yo-yo effect by the time someone has put down an effort when it gets to you at the back when you start to put it down they're probably doing something else and if you're too far back it can be a detriment because for example right here we're, we're climbing right here and you in the back if there's a 20 man group you haven't hit this climb yet and once we're done with the climb and you hit it if we're going downhill you're going to be climbing while we're going downhill so you need to be alert when you're riding the pace line and stay close and don't always try to be the last guy all I'm focused on here is just staying close to Mark I, I don't overlap Mark because he goes left and right often so I just stay within a foot and by looking around him I can tell when the guys at the front are going harder so I don't wait for him to go before I go I'm reacting to what they're doing up there there must be another rider on the side or riders so we're letting people in the back know yes there's some cyclists on the right you want to pass people with a lot of room see right there I don't like that Mark got so close to that guy you're not riding with him we have this whole lane there's no reason to be that close pass people with a lot of room people don't expect you to be there when people are riding especially solo they're in their own little world so don't come up on them and startle them give them room stay out of their space I'm gonna move left because I don't want to break and I'm not pedaling but you can see I just roll to the left let the wind and then once Mark goes up I drift back and you can see Paul is right there somebody backed off at the front because we're just rolling down this climb we're not really riding it Bob had gone ahead with uh, Moe's group and I got I guess he got tired of their pace so that's how come we just came across him hey. so this course Fish Creek the, the biggest thing it gives you is a, are a lot of repeats So right here the power's on we're going up it's going to level off as we approach the overpass and as I've said before this new overpass they added on this side it's not as intense as the old one the grade is slightly less of course you know you can make it as intense as you want it to be by your gear selection but the you know the grade is not as dramatic the one on the left is steeper so as we approach it you see it said hole mark hit the hole so saying hole did not help mark the guys in the front should have steered us away from the hole even if you don't point don't ride into the hole and then say hole you know open your eyes you're not riding blindfolded so if you're at the front you don't steer the group to the obstacle you ride away from it they'll just follow you I wanted you to see just the watts being put out as we went over this grade. 350 to 4 something, 430, something like that. So we finished the climb, my body got up to like 173 beats per minute. That's what it needed to do to counteract the effort. 
I move to the left. They're telling the guy to go straight at the front. He's a new rider, the one on the orange bike, who earlier had trouble clipping in. And I, get, I don't know if you heard it or didn't hear it. I just move around him. Oh, this is the gentleman that was pulling. I move around him because I don't want to lose my momentum. So we end up, I end up moving up a few places in the line. This is McKillop Road. They're still yelling, hole, hole. Point to it. Point to the hole. You see, Mark's pointing to the hole. That's more effective. So I guess Mark Mark picked up on the fact that they yelled hold and he hit the first hole. For some reason they just did that overpass and they did a crappy job on the pavement because it's falling apart. I mean it's less than six months old and the pavement has got holes all over the place. They need to get the, whoever the contractor is need to come back and fix it on the warranty. I mean that's pitiful. The roads are being washed away. It's almost like they didn't cure the asphalt properly. The holes all over the thing. So Mark's uh, directions were more effective because you saw him point at the hole, whereas the other guys were yelling hole. Because once he points, I don't care to see what's there. I just go away from it. We're going to be turning left on Capitol Road here. So I move over into the left turn, the center turn lane. I turn down my effort a little bit. I'm just watching to see what they're doing. When you turn on Capitol, it goes up. It might be 2% or so, but you can see physically, visually, the road goes up. It says one on the display. That's the guy on the left who just passed me that was leaving the gap early in the ride. Um, all I'm doing is keeping my, my effort the same. We know this road, we know what's going on. I'm trying to see what they're doing. In a little bit, I'm just gonna stay in the same gear and increase my cadence and close the slight gap that's there from where I am to the back of the group. I think it's around here. Let's see, right here, look at my cadence. It goes up to, let's see, what did I do, 95? I thought I went faster than that. Or maybe I haven't gone yet. Oh yeah, I guess I already did. I, I thought I had gone over 100, but I just revved it up to close the gap. Instead of shifting up, I used the same gear and revved it up. We're descending here. And when, when you're descending, you can see the gap he's leaving again. I'm rolling around him because all the gaps that you leave, you have to close. I'm going to move to the left of Bob and I'm going to get on Mark's wheel right there. Because I don't know why he's sitting over there. The draft is on this side. That's why I'm on that side. So as you ride, you have to pay attention to where the wind's blowing from. The wind's blowing from the north right now. So by being on this left side, I get a nice draft. That's why you saw me where I got to and where I am right now. The road goes up here. says 2%. I don't know what it gets to. It might get to maybe 3 but... It, it goes up all the way to the intersection coming up there. The intersection at Raven Chapel. And people usually accelerate towards that intersection. I keep my gears relatively low and keep my cadence high. You see how we're pointing at a hole, Mark and I? That works. Because all a rider needs to know is that you're pointing to the right, they're gonna go left. They don't have to even see it. Or you just ride away from the obstacle because if they're following you that's what they need you can yell for general hazards but something specific yelling is inefficient so they start to hesitate they like to stop at that corner I don't like to stop in the middle of nowhere you have a store you're going to you can stop there right here Mike s5 mentioned something about whether they were regrouping I mean I didn't know what they were doing I was just riding so he comes around to take his position because he was in front of me in the line. 
Then he slows down again, and I guess he's waiting for them to regroup. You'll see me go around him, and then he'll come back around. I just keep riding. I want. Look, we need to keep moving. There's no reason to stop here. The rest of the guys can form a group and keep moving. And everybody's pretty much here. I mean, they're not that far off the pace. They just didn't turn with us. They hesitated on that corner. The three of three of us here put a little bit of a gap on the, the group. I don't know if Paul turns the camera around. I don't believe he does here. We're just kind of riding. We're keeping the effort going. It's cold in the morning, you keep going. That keeps you nice and comfortable. Especially for a lot of riders that dress to accommodate how their body temperature will rise when they're putting out effort. You don't want to stop riding and be out there and you just and you just dress just right, then you will get cold. So keep moving. Because that's why you came out. You came out to ride, not stand on the corner. So. So Mike S5 is going to pull until we get to the intersection before we head towards the Ribbon Chapel first climb. Lane. I keep my cadence low on purpose because really the road is slightly flat right now it's rolling. It says minus one slightly downhill so there's no point in me spinning you you want to minimize excessive energy waste keeping a high cadence when it's not necessary you waste a lot of calories and energy so save it cycling is about timing find the appropriate gear for you based on your strength level and sit in I'm sitting very closely behind him this is the intersection here once we go through in about probably 500 meters we begin a climb the first part of Raven Chapel I check it's clear I let them know it's clear it, it dead ends on the left there's not a whole lot there's never a whole lot of traffic here he pulls off just as I expected I continue the same effort he was doing the road is slightly up so it says 1% strictly by feel just continue the same effort because I figure if they want to go faster when we get to the climb, they'll come around. If you're pulling the group and you're coming to a climb, set a tempo that allows you to, first of all, finish the climb. Second of all, be able to accelerate if you choose to from that tempo. Because if you're going full gas on a climb and someone goes harder, then yeah, your choice is to just hold your rhythm, you know, versus trying to blow on a climb. Well, Paul spins. This is a good shot here. That's Mark and Bob sitting there. So we begin the climb here. It's two percent. You will see my watts go up. What I do is I downshift and I increase my cadence. I'm doing like 400 watts right now, and out of the corner of my eye, I see shadows coming up. So I just lift my pace just a bit. It's not that steep here right now, it's like 3%. I keep it around four something. I'm not going very hard. Probably going three out of five here. But I'm watching those guys and before we even crest, because I don't want to ride away from the camera here. Before we even crest the turn off the power, you will see in a little bit of camera will catch it right there. That guy pulled off to the left. He took that, the guy in the red, across the road, because he shouldn't have done that. What he should have done was, if you're going to stop, you stop. But you don't stop and pull left. Because that guy was drafting him. So he, he just went ahead and went around the guy on the left that you see there. He's sitting on the right right now. But they didn't stay with the guy who initiated the attack up there. 
And he's backed off the power too. He's spinning now. And right now, I'm just going to stay where I am because I figure, okay, they want to mix it up. Let them get to the front. Now, this is the second little bump that we go over. I stay in the same gear. So they accelerated a little bit and then they turned off the power. Right there. The power is off right here. That's why they're bunching up right there. Nobody's really taking the lead per se. <laughs> so those are the things you have to watch. Don't waste your energy unnecessarily. We're going to be turning right. Especially if you don't know the terrain. If you don't know what's to come, be conservative. Save it for the critical moments. We turn right here. I'm going to downshift. And I'm going to rev up and ride up to them. Now, the, the guy who took this guy on the red across the road back there with that effort, he's on the back right in front of me here. He's basically what we call paying the tax for that effort. He's not sitting back here because he wants to be at the front. He's sitting back here because he has no choice. He's trying to recover. You see the gap open to the guy in the red? And then Bob is over there. I'm watching them. I'm like, well, let me see what they do. Then he's going to look around. <laughs> we see he looked, he looked at me. I'm sitting there. I'm watching. There's a curve coming. And then I go to the right. Because I know this terrain. I know that right in that curve, these guys are going to drill it. So I move around. And right there, look at the watts. I go from 150 watts. I put down the power right there. Power goes to 300. Yep. 340 something we open a gap here I'm on the group I'm on the back of the group right here I I was not aware that Paul wasn't there the Paul was blocked you can see Paul's shadow right here Paul was blocked when I made that move by that guy but that guy was trying to catch his breath because of the effort he made on that climb so you need to be selected I look back and I see that Paul's off my wheels I thought he was there and then I back off and I start to wait for him Cause this is about where we let the group go when we turn down the road. Legends, we found a new road called Red Top, heading towards Shiro, Texas. We're not sure if it's gonna stay paved, but we're gonna explore. We're headed north, and this is about three hours and 35 minutes into a seven hour or so ride. We haven't been on this road before, so we're not sure how far it goes before the pavement deteriorates. But we like to explore. Almost three percent here. So we're climbing. You see Paul putting more power into the pedals here. The road goes up. I think that's gravel right there. Yep, <laughs> this is almost at the end here. <laughs> so we had been on the road for a while before we turned the camera on. So we keep the camera on when we do a U-turn. I unclip and turn around. The road's very narrow. The gravel starts where you see that little stick on the left. We had been on this road a long time ago when a wagon train had come at the main intersection with Bayes Chapel. So we decided to ride this back to Bayes Chapel and film all the way to 149. Because Bayes yeah. Chapel is a beautifully nice. paved road, recently paved in the last yeah. year or so. Man. It's huge. Watch it. Look at that pasture. <laughs> There's a lot of farms out why here. Why we come here, man? Yeah. Look at that road. I love it out here. This, in car. this is the safest place to ride your bike. Safer than any yeah. area in your metropolis other than maybe a park. Nothing out here. You come here, you get a great workout. This is the positioning I'm talking about. Look at my torso and the angle in relation to the horizontal. You should not be sitting upright on your bike. You're not riding a mountain bike that has a tiny frame that the, the bars need to come up to you. 
and even on a mountain bike if you get the right size your position should be the same so if you sit very upright you catch a lot more wind you work harder and it's just not a good position for your lower back anyway you take pressure off your lower back when you're in the proper position the road goes up here so I stand says three percent I think it's closer to four four point something so we seek out roads that are quiet and have a lot of challenge like this one so even though we visit the same area every week we try to find a different road that is unfamiliar that keeps it interesting you look around, nothing. We get one farmhouse every so often. You can hear the wind. It's almost 11 a.m., 10.42, so later in the morning the winds always pick up. I was telling him that Shiro is about six miles behind us. And I didn't want to ride gravel, neither did he. We didn't have the right equipment for gravel. And so, we turned around. But look at this road, is this pretty or what? And it's here all the time, just like this. So that's why we brave the busy roads, so we can get out here and enjoy these. This is where we do our serious workouts. Yeah, 4. 4.6. 4.6. Wow. It doesn't look like much, but you feel it. Filming those cows. Man. I'm harassing the cows here. You guys need to work out. It's pretty good. Just standing around. <laughs> 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 Cows don't work out much, man. Unless there's a stampede, they don't move. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> the road across, we're coming to an intersection, and our plan the next time is to check out that road directly across because that looked interesting, too. <laughs> That's a road we've never been on. Look at it. Look how it snakes up there. That's probably a 7 or 8% climb over there. We're going to check that out the next time we're out here. We're pressed for time because we're almost 4 hours into the ride. And we're almost 4 hours from home, so we didn't have time to do too many more excursions. Yeah. I just looked at it like, yeah. So that's how we do it, you know, the same area, but, you know, they're, they're roads galore. And every week we add a new one to the repertoire. This is Bayes Chapel Road, newly paved, less than a year ago, I think, about a year, to say. We had ridden it one day when it was all mud. They had basically scraped the entire length of this road, and they paved it all in a short period of time. This road goes up the entire way and we're going into the south wind. We are headed south. As the day warms, you see it went from 3 Celsius to 14 Celsius. This is all um, You see it? Curves and it continues. Right now it's almost 4. It's almost 4% here. Something. But what I was going to say is I'm going to make a review video, an updated review video of these thermal jerseys. Because bar none, these are my favorite jerseys for varying temperatures. They have a very wide range. And they're like one of the most practically made jerseys I've encountered. So look for that review coming up. I'm going to do a copy of the purple one. But uh, I think it's... If you're going to buy one jersey for winter, this is the one you want to get. We're wearing a green copy on this ride. Look at 
look at that road. Look at this. It's as if to say they shut down the road to cars. So the roads that Paul and I go on after we leave the group, they look like this. Quiet. This is quieter than the roads in my neighborhood where I live. There's nothing out here, just the cows hanging out. You get a couple of dogs now and then. <laughs> you know, cars periodically. But this is it. So we can use the entire road and get a good workout. You need to seek out the quieter roads in your area. If you're not familiar, talk to your local bike shop. Those guys will know. Or if you ride with a group, you use the routes that they use. Groups usually use these kind of roads. But these roads that we get on, because a lot of them are out and back, I'm harassing the cows here again. He's moving. He wagged his tail. I told him, I said, that's why I go to so lean to move around. You guys don't move around. The cow wagged his tail looking at me. They only move their heads. They don't move their bodies. The climate's kicked in here. But what I was saying is that check out your local bike shop. They'll give you routes if you're new to an area. Or if you have Garmin Connect and you have a Garmin product, it's free. You can look at their heat maps and find roads. So that's what I use. So that because you, you miss these roads because you can ride by like on 149. Most of the groups that just stay on 149 go to Richards. They don't come back here. But guys like Jerry and more and then periodically they'll come on these roads that where that truck is coming from that's the road we took to get out here right there and we, we went north when we came earlier so this will take us back to the main highway but this entire stretch you're working against the wind and gray yeah Those dogs are in a kennel. This must be a like a dog farm or dog raising farm, whatever. But they got them in their kennel in the cages. They're barking. I told them to break out and go free. <laughs> so we're keeping the effort right at the top of zone two because we know there are other climbs coming on this route. And then when we get to the climbs, we'll push a little harder. This road is called Bay's Chapel Road. It's near the county line between Montgomery County and Grimes County. We're on the outskirts of Richards, Texas. We stay on this side of the county line because the roads in Montgomery County are paved better. It has a, a larger tax base which allow them to have more funds to invest in the roads. Once you hit Grimes County, the roads are a little rougher, unless you're on the US highways and the state highways. The county roads are rougher. And a lot of the county roads are not paved, so that road, Red Top, was a county road. They didn't finish the pavement. Fifteen Celsius. About 56 degrees Fahrenheit. Just a pleasant morning. What else are you going to do on a Saturday? Slight grade here, then it levels off. Let's see if we get a shot of the distance. You will see uh, 
This road is really beautiful from the We haven't yeah, it's gonna snake to the left and then it kicks up. You can see it in the distance there. And it's gradual all the way to the highway. So we come out here because it's a nice long climb. That's why that's how we're able to ride eight hours. Of course you build up to it, but our bikes fit our bodies, they're comfortable. We can stay on them all day long. Nothing hurts. Just from the effort. There's no discomfort, no saddle sores, nothing. Look at the road in the distance. You see it going between the trees. That's the elevation we're we're headed towards. your rhythm the same the road gets a little downhill minus zero relatively flat and all I do is I make sure I increase my cadence now it's gonna start kicking up we're already into the grade because the GPS has to react but I can already feel it here and uh, my cadence is down as I adjust to the change in effort. Now it's finally catching up, it's in 1%, but it's been a grade for a bit. It's going to get harder than that. I'm standing because it's kicking up. You can see it. Oh yeah, now it's registering 2 3%. And look in the distance. It gets even steeper. So we're, it, we're, we climbed about 1,000 meters, uh, which is about 3,200 feet on this ride. And for our area, that's 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 a lot of climbing because you know it's relatively rolling flat to rolling terrain mostly and this is the hill that we saw in the distance at four I think it's more I think it gets to like six point something six and a half percent I just pick a gear that would allow me to keep my tempo the same and apply the pressure we really we worked hard on this one levels off here and then the distance is going to curve to the right and kick up again this is the kind of road you want if you want to work on sustained effort the ability to hold sustained effort because you're riding against resistance most of the length of this entire base chapel road That climb, that climb back there bites. We worked it. That was good. It was good effort. You don't have to kill yourself. Just ride it. Just try to stay smooth. You look at my my feet. 
I look like I'm scraping mud off the bottom of my shoe at the bottom of the stroke. You have to keep your rhythm consistent so that your effort is sustainable. I mean, look at the look at the surface of this road. Just smooth. I told Paul that we need to revisit this area more frequently. We don't come on this road very often. And as nice as it as it is, and with the challenge it provides, we need to visit it more frequently. I want to thank our supporters and our channel members and patrons for supporting Bello Harmony. Become a channel member. The link's in the video description. Support our production of quality cycling content. To slide downhill, get the ride larger gears. After a long climb like that, you don't want to coast. The cows are hanging out. Got a lot of pasture out here. He's looking at us. The cows are looking at us. I think we even ended up filming some long horns. I'm not sure if those are the ones we passed or not. See that road going up in the distance? This entire stretch was up. climb right here you can see how far it goes find the appropriate gear and settle into a tempo We're still climbing. So you can find long climbs. You just have to seek them out. And even if you can't go into the wind, you can simulate climbing. This was at least a 10 or 15 minute effort. Messing with those cows, they're lying by the lake. You can't really see them. <laughs> they're lying by the lake. Uh, they're in the distance. You can see that we basically gained. Elevation this entire stretch. There were some cyclists on the main highway in the distance. We saw them going, going left, south. 
That's the main highway 149 that goes to Richards on the right. Richards is about three kilometers to the right. Probably five kilometers. Five kilometers to the right. And then uh, Houston is about maybe a hundred kilometers to the left. <laughs> So I hope you got a chance to get some casing. This is what we did, part of what we did on Saturday. 